Welcome. It's wonderful to be back. Uh, I really was missing these uh, Zoom information calls. Uh, and, uh, you know, believe me, though, July the 1st, I'll have plenty of time on my hands. But I'm, I probably won't get invited back at that point in time. But I'll be there. As, looking forward to be there as an audience. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, that transition that goes on at this time of year as we move towards July 1st. So, firstly, I hope you had a wonderful Easter weekend. Uh, if you celebrate Easter, that is. If not, I just hope you had a wonderful weekend. Um, we really appreciate you being with us here. And as you saw from the initial trailer, we're, we're celebrating Environment Month this month. And uh, our role in supporting the environment has never been more important than it has been right now. I've just come back from a wonderful district conference in Charleston, South Carolina, Carolina if I can pronounce it. So, all y'all. I just want to let you know that we have some really significant um, similarities, actually, between South Carolina and the Caribbean region that I'm in. Um, with existential threats in relation to sea level rise not being the least of them. I know they're a very low-lying area, as the Caribbean are. So these environmental uh, months really just focuses on things that are not just matter to us in terms of plastics in the oceans and uh, the things we do around our communities, but they can be really existential. So it's great to see Rotary finally identified this as our seventh area of focus a few years back. Uh, the other interesting thing I noticed in South Carolina, in Charleston, was the um, the, the whole concept of uh, similarities between the Caribbean region and there with the legacy of slavery. Um, really interesting to see some good recent history um, with the uh, community coming together and the Rotary and the, play, the role that Rotary is playing there in building peace in the communities. Uh, a very important one with the opening of a new museum and uh, some of the projects that are going on. And building peace intentionally in our clubs and districts will be um, even more essential as we move forward this year and into next year. I think uh, you know, we, we're, we're threatening to see what could be termed as the craziness of elections coming up. So I think the opportunity is there for us, for Rotary to really be that bonding agent between the community. So let's walk the talk in terms of our core values and what binds us together in terms of the amazing service we do at a time that our communities and the world needs us most. Let's really focus on what joins us rather than what separates us as we move forward. I think it's going to be essential in North America for, in particular for that to happen. So I want to recognize also today is um, April Fool's Day. Um, now, I had absolutely no idea whether there are any surprises planned by our production team. So I, I'm issuing that disclaimer from the very start. Um, this is the management disclaimer. Um, and I was thinking about disclaimers. You know, that's something that, you know, whilst I can issue that for this school, it, it's not something that we have our, in, our, in our tool set to be able to walk away from anything that we're doing um, in relation to our zones, our districts, and our clubs. As leaders, we really just can't <laughs> apply a disclaimer to our members' rotary experiences. We are responsible, each of us on this call, for how the rotary in our control finishes strong and how we hand over towards the end of the rotary year. In the right regard, what we wanted to do today was to talk a little bit, I'm going to say we, I'm talking about myself and my esteemed successor, um, Rotary International Director, Elect Patrick. So I'd like to welcome Patrick to the stage, so to speak. Uh, Patrick, how are you doing? Great to see you. I am great, Jeremy, and I'm feeling foolish, so it's uh, just the right day. <laughs> Well, that's, that's very appropriate, Patrick, and um, I think uh, that applies to many of us on many occasions. So um, what we really wanted to talk about today, I think, is, is the importance of continuity and leadership, and we're going to sort of tag team a little bit on that. And I thought what I'd just start by doing is just updating everyone here on some of the decisions that the board have taken over the past year and, uh, and the reasons for taking it. I think we all agree that um, continuity leadership is important, but as I think I've said many a time, when we look at our annual refresh, it's almost as if our system is designed not to build that in. It's designed to do the opposite. We have this concept of a my year, right, Patrick? And it's, it really is something which is, um, you know, can be can be quite destructive if, uh, if if it's taken to its extreme and create zigzagging in each of those directions. I know, I know you, you and I agree on that, and we've been really working towards it. And thanks for this wonderful graphic of continuity. Um, and so there was a couple of choices we had, but we thought the uh, the zebras um, are uh, were, were appropriate to to bring into place. There, these are not stripy asses, by the by the by the way. These are definitely zebras. So just just to be clear on that. Um, but a couple of things that we've done on a board level recently, um, and I'll touch on them briefly, and you've heard me talk about them before. The first is moving clubs and districts and Rotary as a whole towards a three-year planning cycle as opposed to a single-year planning cycle. So getting away from that my year concept. And 
The other thing we really identified was that we had so many goals as an organization, but we didn't really know that we had goals in some ways. They were just too many to take on. So we've really simplified down as a board to see six key goals, and these are going to be approved at the up and coming board meeting in April, and Patrick will be there. And these will really focus on the fundamental things we do as an organization. And that won't surprise you that it will include in polio, it will include which is obviously our top uh, top corporate priority. It will include membership, our top organization priority, and include the other foundation programs. And it's also going to include the importance of building a three year cycle, planning cycle, a rolling planning cycle within the clubs. So those goals are also going to be um, taken on board top to bottom within our organization. So everybody's focusing and pushing behind them. In other words, they'll be fully aligned from uh, the club chair to the club member to the club board to the president up to the district level to the zone level, regional leader level, right the way up to the secretariat and the board and the presidents and the chair of the trustees. So the idea is that we're all pushing in the same direction on those key things. Now, of course, we'll have other regional goals, there'll be regional adaptability, but those six areas are ones that we're going to be aligned behind and really focus on. And we're going to try and turn the needle in terms of things like membership growth and making sure that we continually year on year build the support for our foundation and then polio, of course. Um, so this multi-year, three-year rolling goals will also be supported by regional plans that we've talked about, which again will be um, owned by uh, the directors and they'll be there to support the districts and clubs just in the same way MAP is and, and for the Foundation Regional Action Plan, which Sandra is chairing, uh, RFC Chan, Sandra is chairing as well, driving forward. Uh, the other things that are changing and the, is at the presidential level. The president line themselves are walking the talk. They've agreed to um, basically remove the annual concept of an annual theme and go to a three-year uh, uh, strategically designed messaging campaign that's designed not just by each president, but designed by the organization as a whole with multiple stakeholders commenting on these things. In any case, it's an interesting it's an interesting time. And of course, in addition to that, on a, on a zone level, we also have a communication action plan, uh, which is being headed by Marshall Butler, uh, past our pick Marshall. So I would like to just congratulate that zone for leading the way across the world in relation to these regional plans. But the whole idea of them is to support the clubs and build continuity. Um, and we'll emphasize this at all levels of, of, of leadership. Um, and I think it's uh, it's something that we're we, we're trying to set the example with Patrick. And uh, I just thought, you know, what what are your thoughts on the way the board's been heading in this direction? And uh, as you come in, director, you know, where you see the board going going forward? Yeah, Jeremy, I I think uh, the board. Th this is a substantial change for our organization, and I think one that uh, whose time has certainly come. Uh, it's important particularly for those who serve, some may see them as lower on the organizational chart, but really those who we serve as leaders, club leaders, for instance, uh, it's important that they see a unified direction. They see that we're uh, moving in a consistent direction that makes sense and that we're not doing the zigzagging that you, you reference that can happen sometimes. Uh, those of you who are incoming governors, uh, I've, I've met with 28 of our 31 incoming governors over the last two weeks, and the, and the remaining three I'll be meeting with later today and tomorrow. Uh, but I have emphasized uh, how important it is that we exercise this continuity of leadership, that we show our clubs what that looks like, why it's important, and the good results. Uh, and and uh, Jeremy would never say this about himself, but I will tell you, uh, that since I was uh, certified to be governor nominee and now governor elect for about a year and a half now, Jeremy has absolutely walked the walk on this topic. Uh, he has shared with me all kinds of important information, uh, conversations taking place in the board room that I would not yet have seen. Um, Jeremy's also chairman of our Rotary International Executive Committee, so handling all kinds of important business that takes place between the board meetings and it's kept me fully apprised. Um, this is just one way that um, I can be as up to speed and hopefully as, as effective as I can be on 1 July when I officially succeed Jeremy. Um, and, and so that's obviously that's something that, that has been important to me and I'm, I'm very appreciative, but I think more importantly as an organization, this helps us uh, try to have steady and continued leadership and not have dips in such a learning curve. Uh, and, and I would also say that, that even preceding 
Jeremy, um, uh, David Stovall, and Stephanie overlap. We had the unusual situation of uh, zone realignment bringing Stephanie into zone 33. So they actually overlapped years uh, and worked together. And then the same uh, with Stephanie and Peter. Uh, and so we got to see how those relationships work, the value and the power of steady, unified vision. Uh, and then I would uh, give special props to Peter, who, as Jeremy was uh, coming toward uh, becoming director, Peter actually granted uh, a fair amount of money to help fund the genesis of the membership action plan, which has helped give rise to this whole movement of regionally appropriate and, uh, and adaptive ways to tackle uh, the, the biggest issues in, in Rotary on a region by region basis. So uh, I have certainly been set up with uh, great leaders before me who have uh, put me in a position, helped, helped uh, help me be prepared, which is what continuity of leadership looks like. As Jeremy said, this is gonna be taking place at all levels uh, within our organization. So. Uh, those of you who are on this call who are in district or perhaps regional roles, we certainly hope that you're going to continue to uh, put this in practice and demonstrate the power uh, of that approach to uh, to those who we serve at uh, area and club levels. Um, so, Jeremy, um, let's let's talk a little bit about how uh, that gets implemented uh, at all levels of the organization. Yeah, absolutely, Patrick. Well, I just want to reiterate what you just said, the, the importance of had us having to walk the talk, not just this year, but, you know, uh, over the past four directors. And I think, you know, we've really seen the benefit to our zones and, you know, in terms of uh, membership growth, for example. Um, last year, we were number one and two. I think this year, we're number two and three. We're um, seeing if we can get back to that one and two position. Um, we're seeing the green shoots of success there. Of course, we're still not where we want to be, but these things take time and it's almost a changing culture. And that's why, you know, we've really pushed towards this multi-year approach as opposed to a single-year approach. And it's so important this continuity is happening um, everywhere um, on the ground because it, 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 Rotary, as we know, doesn't happen at director level. We can just set the example. It happens within the club. So, so just talk a little bit about, you know, the things we can do as leaders right now when we go back to our clubs and we go back to our districts. How, what can we do in those last few months to make a difference? And there's a couple of suggestions that you and I discussed, Patrick. I mean, I think, um, you know, passing the baton is absolutely one that we need to look at. And I think that's something which is, uh, we'll talk about a little bit later in detail. Um, but I think also, you know, let's talk about finishing strong and what that means. I think sometimes we think finishing strong in a year is just doing our very best to get over the line. I, I would argue that finishing strong is, is, it's as important to prepare and to hand over to the current, to the incoming year, to the incoming leaders. Um, and I think that's probably an area that we don't focus on enough. I think sometimes we do have fall into the trap of viewing as the year as my year. And I think what we, our message to the leaders on this call is to go out there and think about that, think intentionally about that. How can you basically hand over the district stronger or your club stronger than it's ever been and ensure that you define your success by making sure that the, your club or district is even more successful next year. That's our responsibility, I would argue. And that's very much part of finishing strong. So a couple of things you can do about it. I mean, Patrick, you talked about the fact you've engaged all of your governor lines and you're talking to them. Um, and by the way, I will ask each of us to note the intentional April Fool comment that you made there a little earlier. I, th I think uh, I'll leave that one to the uh, to the group to identify. Um, but you will be director, Patrick. Um, and I think you may have mentioned uh, you've, you've demoted yourself. Well, you've, you've realigned yourself at the governor level. But anyway, that's another point. But what can we do? What can we do to make that difference? And I think, um, you know, you mentioned talking to that governor line. I, you know, I'd love the, um, the presidents here, or the, just the club leaders here, to, to think about those disengaged members. We all know that when we, we see growth in certain parts of the year, the over year, um, and we all know that there's this concept of the purge at the time when we reach July 1st. Yeah, my comment to you would be, let's not just accept this as um, a fait accompli. Let's just, just not accept this fatalistically. Let's see what we can do about it. And one of the things we can do about it is engage those members that you know are disengaged. 
Now, some of them will be disengaged because they're moving, some of them because of ill health and things that can't be uh, rectified. But others would be just not really enjoying their own experiences. So as incoming leaders, just talk to them, engage them, speak to them, ask them you know, what you can do and what they can do to improve their experience their own experience in this coming year. Ask them how they'd like to get involved. Ask them, you know, what could be done differently within the club. And I think that one-on-one -on -one communication can work at all levels. So if we do that intentionally now, find a way to get that feedback, find a way to engage those members who are disengaged and encourage those who are engaged to be even more engaged following the year, then that's one thing we can actually do and make a difference there. So Patrick, any thoughts on that as we as we wrap up this section? Yeah, I would just say, and maybe it's the engineer in me uh, uh, coming out. I know John Durbin and I uh, share the mechanical engineering field, but uh, uh, I think in terms of momentum and I think in terms of power, and I, I certainly have always felt the responsibility as I was coming to the end of a term as governor, as, as Rotary coordinator, to hand off that position and the leadership that comes with that position with just as much momentum, as much power, as, as much forward thrust as I could. Uh, that just it seems like the right thing to do and and it speaks to exactly what you've been talking about jeremy which is not accepting that there's going to be some dip that occurs here in the in the fourth quarter that we are starting today uh, so i encourage all of you in fact i call on all of you uh, who are in positions of leadership which is basically everybody on this call uh, to, to take that to heart and to put everything you have into a strong fourth quarter i think engaging uh, members who may be starting to drift from our club is, is a great place to start. Uh, we, we know what the, the membership curves often look like, uh, but I will also tell you that I have seen examples of leaders in our zone uh, deciding to do just what you said, Jeremy, and in December or in June saying, we're not going to accept it. Uh, and we're going to we're going to uh, absolutely reverse the trend. So um, I, I call on all of you to be a part of that this year and to get us off to, to not only a, a great finish to this year, but a great start for our successors who will be stepping in 1 July. Thanks, Patrick. Really appreciate your perspective. And as you know, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be probably be on the beach a little more, but I'll be at a phone's call away, just in case you need anything fully supportive of you. And we've got some great momentum going there, zones, and really looking forward to you taking the role as our director. Well-deserved. Um, and one of the times we're going to be celebrating that continuity as we come up is going to be in uh, Singapore, no less, of course. And we have now moved back uh, towards, and I say back because we've been doing an evil event, we've been going to a breakfast event once again, the traditional Southland breakfast. And what a great opportunity that's going to be, not just to look uh, back at the successes, but also forward and to pass that balance between uh, none other than President uh, uh, Gordon and President, uh, President-elect Stephanie, our very own president. So there's an opportunity to be there. You will not have the opportunity ever again, I don't think, to have this many leaders in the Rotary Room at the same time. Uh, not only will we have President-elect Stephanie, we'll also have President nominee uh, Mario joining us. Uh, we also understand General Secretary John is going to be looking to come and of course um, uh, Trustee Chair Barry will be there as well as Patrick and myself. We're going to have a great morning and I'm going to pass over to Cam now to, to explain to you why if you haven't already you should book. Absolutely. Thank you uh, uh, Jeremy for this uh, you know for leading up to this amazing event. Uh, so as a theme for today is like continuity uh, we should talk about how we can make sure that we have an amazing, amazing Southland breakfast event at uh, the Singapore Convention. So my ask to each one of you who's on this call is number one, is to reach out to your friends, uh, you know, those who are actually attending the uh, Singapore uh, Convention or not, to attend this special Southland breakfast that is just set up for, for our zones 33, 34. Um, the lineup is amazing. Uh, I, I will tell you the food is just, it's just, it's just too good, uh, I would say, from the menu perspective. And uh, thanks to Jeremy for, for uh, kind of setting up for this one. So the, the date for the, for the Southland breakfast is May 27th. Uh, please make a note. Reach out to your, your leadership team as well as to anybody within your districts who is attending the convention to register today. We have very limited seats now. Uh, we are going to close out at 300. We are almost around 220. 80 more left, and uh, you know I'm expecting that by the end of today's call or probably tomorrow, we have this closed out. So look forward to see you all in Singapore.
Thank you. Back to you, team. Thank you, Cam. Thank you so much. I am looking forward to that breakfast. Uh, we, we've we've had some afternoon events uh, more recently, but it'll be fun to uh, get back together for breakfast and get uh, one of the days of the convention off to a great start. Uh, I'm going to turn now. We're going to continue with our theme of continuity of leadership and introduce and, and hand the, the floor over to Renee Laws. Renee is the current governor of District 7610, which is in Northern Virginia, the United States. And she is also a dear friend. So, Renee, tell us a little bit about your perspective on how we have uh, leadership continuity. Well, thank you, Patrick. And um, thank you for giving us this opportunity to kind of talk about what we've been doing in our district. Uh, um, it started a few years ago when um, some of our, our past district governors decided the continuity piece was uh, crucial to the success of our district and the clubs. To, so to set that example, uh, they started speaking about it at the club visits and they started working together to figure out, you know, what are our long-term plans? What do we want to do together to carry over? Uh, and then Sheila, PDG Sheila took that to another level and added in um, how important it was to respect the past, our traditions, our historical uh, information and, and kind of appreciate where we've come from take those uh, ideas, work with the people that have, have been there to build this foundation and help us progress and move forward innovatively. And so we kind of established that plan. Um, and so right now we're um, we're working on uh, moving into DGE Amelia's year on July 1st. And uh, she and I had a really great agreement at the beginning, um, no holds barred, total honesty uh, and complete um, uh, uh, collaboration. The biggest piece to this, and this is something I've seen consistently in our leadership in recent years, uh, we've taken away the idea that we need to worry about who gets credit. And the whole idea is what's the project, what's the end result, what's going to benefit our clubs the most, our communities the most, but more importantly, our Rotary members the most. And so that's the key to our, our plan. And that's why we've been building this continuity. Thank you, Patrick. Back to you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Renee. And I love the fact that you keep the focus on those we serve. In your case, you're serving your clubs, our members. That's great. Um, we reached out to Amelia Stancil, who Renee mentioned, who is the district governor-elect for District 7610. She couldn't be with us in person today. Before you get too concerned or put her on your prayer list or anything, she is on vacation in uh, Tuscany in Italy with her family. Uh, but she did record a message that we're going to share with you now. Hi guys, I'm Amelia Stansel, the DGE for District 7610, normally calling in from Northern Virginia, but today I'm in Tuscany, so I'm going to do my video from here. I was asked to be able to do a presentation or share with you guys some of the, the transition tips that we have from District 7610 when we're looking at leadership's transition and the continuity of leadership through our district. Made me stop and think about that. It's just the, the year of the Summer Olympics, and one of the things I really like to watch is the is the relay races. When you think about leadership continuity and Rotary, it's a lot like a relay race of maybe a never-ending marathon. When you think about going from DGND to DGN to DGE to DG to IPDG, and then all the PDGs ever after, right? So it's a never ending marathon, but what we're all doing is running that same race towards the same finish line. And one of the things you have to have is a very clear communication of what our vision is and where we're going, what that, that finish line looks like, and then have regular check-ins with each other. So in our district, we have a regular check-in where we have once a week, we get together from the DGND through the, D, the current DG to talk about where we're going, how we're gonna get there, what's on each other's plate, that way we're able to have that constant communication. Other things that, that's helped us through this transition time is our current DG, Renee, Renee Laws, the Friday before I left for International Assembly, let the entire team know, hey, when Amelia gets back from IA, she's gonna be full steam ahead, and that she was gonna step aside a, a little bit, not fully aside, but to be able to allow me to come up to, to come up to speed. So you think about that runner and the running that, that, that leg, they know that as they're getting ready to hand off the baton, they've got to step aside and allow that, that next runner to come up with them to get full speed so they can have a successful handoff. So right now, Renee is running full on, holding tight on that, that baton so it doesn't get fumbled at the last minute. And I'm running as fast as I can with my arm out to be able to, to exchange with her. So other things that, that we've been doing is 
Um, I've noticed that Renee continues to run her race, like I said, holding onto that baton, still doing everything she needs to be able to do so that she doesn't drop that baton because we can't, we can't uh, cross over too early or too late or you get disqualified, right, in a, in a, in a relay. So it's similar to that in, in Rotary. We want to make sure that we're both running the best race we can. After executing that changeover, what I've noticed works well in our district is for that IPDG to really step aside, allow that, that DG to come to, to come and run their race, but then cheering them on, constantly being there for support, but yet allowing them to, to be able to lead. She invited me actually to be able to, to jump on, even all the way from here from, uh, from Italy, I jumped on at midnight onto her president's call this week to be able to talk to her presidents who are finishing up their, their race to be able to talk about how they have that continuity and that leadership transition within within their clubs. But then how did those presidents, so they don't just disappear, how do they then find how they fit in their club and how they fit in the district and, and invited them to be able to serve on district committees with all their newfound time that they're going to have. I think it's up to us as the DG line to set an example for what, what we expect our presidents and our clubs to be doing when they're going through their transition as well. So. I hope that gives you a better idea of what we do in 7610 and gives you some tools to be able to take back to your district. Ciao. That was great of Amelia to, to go to that extra effort to uh, make that recording for us and to, to demonstrate on a very firsthand way how uh, District 7610 with its, with its district governor line is doing such a nice job of what we're talking about here, continuity of leadership so that um, club leaders understand where we're going they understand that there could be multiple leaders uh, who are in full sprint, as she put it. Uh, and so now we're going to have the opportunity to hear from Governor nominee Ravi, excuse me, Ravi Respeto. And Ravi, I appreciate you joining us today to give us your perspective. Hey, Patrick, thanks so much for having me on today. It's a real privilege to address such a committed group of Rotarian leaders. So my goal in the short amount of time I have is to emphasize the critical importance of collaboration and unity among the district governor line, particularly from a cohesion and succession planning perspective. We know that we're entrusted with the responsibility of steering our districts towards shared goals around service and fellowship and community impact. But our goals, our roles also extend beyond our individual terms. So we're part of a continuum of leadership within Rotary that relies on collaboration and seamless transitions to ensure the sustainability and success of our organization's mission. Some of the practical um, items that we think about from a cohesion perspective would include ensuring that everyone's um, involved in the strategic planning process. When we look at our three-year strategic plan, that all of our leadership has had the opportunity to weigh in and be a part of that process. Building a strong district leadership team, making sure that when we have terms that extend three years, we're all involved in supporting and recruiting those leadership positions, whether it be chairs of key committees or the assistant governors, thinking about our budget and financial planning. So what Amelia does in her year when she plans the budget actually impacts the investment and training and growth of you know, youth leadership programs, for example, in my year. So making sure that we have that kind of communication and that we're planning together. Cultivating future leaders through emerging leaders are always looking at who's coming up behind us, who can recruit, who can we work together to support um, and, and gaining leadership in the district. And then also maintaining important initiatives year to year that support the strategic direction. So making sure that we're all on the same page about what those initiatives are and we're willing to invest our time and energy in a real cohesive manner. And there's also a lot of soft skills I think that are really important to mention. Um, for example, trust and transparency amongst your leadership teams, really key. Creating an environment where ideas can be shared openly with a culture of acceptance. Can't tell you how far that goes. Playing to one another's strengths, realizing that we each come with unique abilities, lived experience, professional backgrounds. So understanding that we are called to be generalists in these roles often, but we also come with very specific expertise to offer. So leaning into that expertise and then cultivating an environment of belonging so that if a fellow leadership member is sharing a struggle or something that may not be easy to see on the surface, there's acceptance and encouragement versus competition or needing to be known for one's own accomplishments own accomplishments. So less of a focus on, in my year, I'm going to do such and such, and I'll be known for such and such, and more of an emphasis on, in the year I get to lead an amazing team, we will be focusing on the following initiatives. So much more of a we approach. And there will inevitably be a time of disagreement in the district amongst members in a club or a group of clubs. So having a unified front is critical when challenges arise, so leadership can be effective through one shared approach and message, better managing the flow of communication. And that comes up a lot, as we all know. 
Um, so by working closely together, we can fac facilitate knowledge transfer and institutional memory retention, ensuring that the progress and momentum of our district's initiatives are maintained across leadership transitions. And in closing, I would just urge each of you to prioritize collaboration and cooperation in your roles as district governors or district governor elects or district governor nominees, um, just embracing the spirit of teamwork, which really defines um, our Rotary journey and what it means to be a Rotarian. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. You, as I was thinking about what I was going to say to recap, you you hit it right at the end there. The, the spirit of cooperation, of collaboration, of communication. It's going to look a little different in each district, in each club, but I think those qualities are going to be there when we see successful continuity of leadership. Uh, so thank you to all of our representatives from District 7610 today. Uh, appreciate very much you demonstrating what this should look like and, and what a successful transition and continuity of leadership looks like. So we're going to turn now uh, to get an update in Rotary Foundation uh, matters, and I'm very pl pleased to turn the, uh, the microphone over to Sandra Hempstead, who is our Zone 34 Regional Rotary Foundation Coordinator, and she is also the chair of our Rotary Foundation Regional Action Plan. So Sandra, take it away. Thank you, Patrick. I'm really excited to talk to you a bit today about the Foundation Regional Action Plan. And I want to start by thanking everyone in, on this call because we have two amazing zones. So you might be asking yourself, why are we needing an action plan? And, and I think Director Jeremy hit the nail on the head when he says we're continuing to evolve. And it may be that we have opportunities to tuck in place and refresh some of our processes. And we may also have some gaps. And I know many of you were, were on the, uh, the, the meetings involved in the discussions that we had during last year, where we provided our feedback as to what we thought would be important to focus on in this uh, inaugural year of the Foundation Regional Action Plan. And um, I took all of those uh, flip charts and sticky notes and all those things, and we consolidated those and came up with five areas of opportunity. Uh, the first one is looking at our regional roles, what responsibility fits in which role, and then looking at where we overlap, where we may be collaborating on a particular action item and where we may have gaps. And frankly, I think some of the gaps are probably in the other four of our areas of opportunity. The biggest one that came up every single time that we talked is foundation knowledge and ensuring that our club presidents and our club uh, that our clubs have foundation chairs and that they have bite-sized chunks of actionable information that they can do to support their club in working with the Rotary Foundation. We want to take a look at the uh, grants and grant process, developing a team of experts because our grants do require some administrative expertise to write the grants and to follow up with uh, reports and, and uh, the administrative processes of grants. We wanna identify think, uh, the great work that we're doing that could potentially be program of scale opportunities and also, we are unique in that we have so many different countries within our paired zone. So we have an opportunity to be working together with nation to nation within our, our zones uh, so that we can do projects together. Um, our, our next opportunity area is with reporting. We'll be looking at a gap analysis to see where we have reports and where we perhaps need some additional tweaking to the reports that are out there. And of course, with um, having our new rolling three-year metrics, we'll want to look at how do we develop a consolidated monthly report so we can tell each month uh, where we stand with our metrics. And the final opportunity areas with giving campaigns and specifically giving campaigns at all levels of giving. We have a great uh, team that's working with us on million dollar dinners and governor galas and the like, but let's look at all the levels of giving as we um, try to increase the number of Rotarians that are giving to the Rotary Foundation at any level of giving. And we'll want to take a look at stewarding clubs as major donors to the Rotary Foundation. We do have clubs that are not giving and we have clubs that are giving in a small way. And I think with some stewardship and a, a new stewardship process to help us to 
um, help the clubs to give in a way that's meaningful to each club. So these are the areas that we're taking a look at. There's a lot of work to be done here. It won't be done overnight, but we will prioritize and work through um, uh, these activities over a period of time. Now, I do have a group of folks that are, have already said yes to being on the team, and I'm really excited about this group of people. We have a very talented group. I'll probably add one or two other folks, but this is our core group that will be working on the Foundation Regional Action Plan. As we embark on some of the activities that were on the prior page, you'll see that um, we will probably add um, other folks to help us with those specific activities. But I wanna thank the folks that are on this, uh, this slide, my core team, I'm really excited to be working with each one of these talented folks. So I, in conclusion, I think I'd like to send it over to uh, Susan Corder to talk about public image. A lot of exciting things happening there, Sandra, thank you. Um, I, on behalf of Billy and I, I want to invite you guys to a really exciting event we have coming up uh, this month. Um, on April 23rd, the Zone 3334 Public Image Team are hosting our boot camp. This is a must attend event for any public image chair at the club or district level, but it's also a great event for any Rotarian or Rot Rotaractor to participate in, as we're going to talk a lot about how to successfully share your Rotary story and promote your club within the community. At this boot camp, we'll delve into the intricacies of crafting a compelling public image for your club or district, and we'll talk about why that's important as well. We'll explore strategies for effective communication, how to tell your Rotary story, how to engage your audience, and how to leverage digital platforms to help amplify your message. For club and district public image shares specifically, this boot camp is really great at providing invaluable insights and resources that will enhance your role throughout the Rotary year. Whether you're looking to revamp your club's social media presence or website, improve your storytelling skills, or simply just learn best practices around public image, this event is tailor-made for you. Now, I know you're busy with lots of other webinars or meetings, so you might be wondering if a boot camp is worth your time. But let me assure you that investing in your club's public image is one of the most impactful investments you can make. Not only does it help you attract new members, retain your members, attract new partners, attract new supporters for your projects, but it also helps strengthen your club's reputation and influence in your community. I guarantee that this one hour will prove to be very beneficial. Don't just take my word for it. Listen to some of the comments that some of your fellow Rotarians and Rotaractors have provided to us about why they felt the boot camp was so important. Brian from the Rotary Club of Clemson and District 7750 said, I found this program to be highly beneficial by providing structure and goals to my role as PI chair. Frank from the Rotary Club of Washington told us that as being new to Rotary, the boot camp gave me a foundation to build on. Frank also continued to talk a little bit more about ElevateRotary.org, our website where we host our webinars and many public image tools. Frank said having an online resource exclusively for public image was invaluable. As this is my first year as PI chair for our club and only my second year as a Rotarian, I was at a loss at the beginning. All the tools and suggestions make it nearly foolproof. And Kimberly from the Rotaract Club of Georgetown in District 7020, told us you've helped significantly by allowing us to continuously promote and tell our Rotaract story. Various tasks help to keep us informed and educated about this noble service organization that we were part of. Now, Kimberly alluded to the various tasks. We offer monthly tasks to clubs to participate in in order to qualify for the Zone 3334 public image citation. We'll be launching those tasks at our boot camp so clubs can get a sneak peek of the tasks that will be taking place July through April and understand what we're going to be asking them to do in order to qualify for this award. At the boot camp, we're also going to cover many of the resources that are avail available at the elevaterotary.org website. And we're very excited to be revealing some of the new tools that our team's gonna be launching to help you be successful with your public image efforts. So please go on to elevaterotary.org now and register for the event. And I look forward to seeing you all at our boot camp on April 23rd.
Next, I'd like to turn it over to PDG Chris Justice to talk about some other events that are coming up. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Susan, and all of our other presenters. All right, so we got some zone trainings coming up. First up at Zone 33, our district team training is taking place April 11th through 13th, right around the corner. If you haven't get, gotten registered, make sure you get registered. Up next is going to be the Zone 34 District Leadership Seminar. That is June 22nd through 23rd, and registration is open for that as well. Also want to remind everybody, make sure you stay connected with us through the various uh, social media channels, like, join, follow, and of course, share. Also want to remind everything, everybody, World Immunization Week is April 24th through 30th. And another plug for our international convention, which of course is May 25th through 29th, make sure you get registered. And as Cam pointed out in particular uh, for the awesome breakfast. Also a reminder, we will not have a Zoom formation meeting in May in deference to the international convention, but we will resume our normal Zoom formation meetings in June. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get you out to our breakouts. Uh, those are going to uh, pop up here in just a second. Um, you should see a pop-up that gives you the option of one of four breakouts. Um, you can meet with Jeremy and Patrick uh, for the director updates. Also, you can meet with Renee to learn more about uh, good continuity planning. Um, Sandra is going to be around for foundation, and Susan will uh, be available to talk more about public image, and in particular, the public image boot camp. So plan A is to click the room you want uh, when the pop-up comes up. If you don't see a pop-up, plan B would be to click on the icon that says breakout, um, which you should see on the bottom of your screen shortly or under the more section. And if all else fails, Art and I will stay back in the main room and we will give you the option uh, to just tell us where you want to go and we will uh, put you in the proper room. Um, no need to come back to the waiting room. Uh, once you are done in the breakout session, you can go ahead and leave the meeting because this will conclude our, our, our plan portion of the meeting. So opening up rooms now and off you go.